and welcome. Good day to you all and happy modding. Here we are again, jumping right into it. Loving, as always, the BG music of the stream. And uh, per the suggestion of somebody from the community, we're actually, actually going to look at adding not only a uh, new music category, I think I'm going to split it off from audio, but uh, we'll be representing some of these albums and tracks on the site to his options for people, you know, if they want to um, get them and throw them into their game. Um, and eventually when we have support for that kind of stuff, we can make cool soundtracks. Hey, Herdrax, welcome, my man. I'm so glad you're here today. I hope you're having a lovely day. Gonzo as well. Welcome. So glad you're here. All right. Um, so yeah, anyway, just ideas I got for when we can do music. Um, sound check. Hello. Yes. I take it you guys can all hear me. <laughs> hey, Santa, dude. I'm glad you're here, man. Thanks for thanks for coming in. Got to come over. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, though, we're going to do a really quick diversion into today's non-Morrowind thing, which is actually a really special non-Morrowind thing. It's the first true non-Morrowind OpenMW game that we're going to look at, um, and that's RoboWind, a.k.a. RWC. Um, I'm not actually sure what RWC stands for right now. I know they wanted to get away from the wind uh, suffix there, but yeah, I mean, let's just take a quick look at some of the uh, video footage that Shadow Mimicry has posted in the Discord channel for RoboWind, and if you're on, yeah, right, Herdrax says RWC hype, super cool, indeed, I mean, this project looks awesome, first off, the art is just phenomenal, like, Shadow Mimicry stuff for Starwind and Morrowind is phenomenal, right, like, Tools of Kagernak, we were looking at that yesterday, outstanding, um, and yeah, just look at this, this is a video showing off specular map effects, potato resolution on my laptop, I apologize, but you can check out the video yourself, um, Check out uh, modding and develop his modding and development YouTube channel here. Uh, we got the latest video though that uh, they posted, and yeah, just like I get total Metroid Prime vibes, um, and just yeah, the art is phenomenal. Just look at these assets, you know. I mean, uh, really cool HUD too. As I understand, our friend Erm uh, helped design some UI elements, um, and yeah, I mean this is OpenMW, and it's totally not Morrowind. It's exciting because all the assets. If they're not already, the intention is to be completely free of, you know, Bethesda assets. Whereas, for example, Starwind still uses some Morrowind stuff. Got those classic animations we all know and love. <clears throat> so, yeah, just uh, uh, major props to Shadow Mimicry and the team. Thank you, Herdrax, for the link there. Um, and the reason why I'm bringing this up today is because Shadow Mimicry actually hit me up on Discord and said, Hey, can we um, put robowind on the website and of course i said yeah yeah let's do it so i don't really know what that's going to look like um we'll have for sure a mod list you know um and probably a little documentation of like how to get set up with the game and stuff um probably doing uh whoop no advertisements probably doing like a portable mode install or something like i recommend for starwind so anyway yeah uh robowind super exciting stuff uh and thank you to uh, shadow mimicry for reaching out and i look forward to kind of building a presence on the website also you know uh we got to start thinking about non-morrowind games a little bit more right and not just um robowind which is exciting but like you know oblivion fallout 3 fallout new vegas etc you know, we're going to have to probably start <laughs> carrying the torch to support those things in OpenMW. So it's really exciting. Um, and I look forward to covering this. Thank you all. So, uh, and then, yeah, we'll move on to do just a quick issues review. There's some stuff that folks have emailed me about that we'll want to, uh, you know, take a look at and make sure we're clarifying right and the text. And, uh, and yeah, just continuing work on the 5.10 CFG generator uh, refactor. I was actually prior to the stream... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, working on implementing uh, a data point that we have for conflicting and depending mods and stuff like that. Uh, big props to Gonzo for the heroic effort in implementing all that in the data. And then, yeah, we'll do a 6.x mod issue roundup and deploy the website. And uh, potentially, maybe we'll carry the stream over uh, and we'll look at finishing my MWSE setup. We'll have that MWSE party. Cue the black flag. All right, let's move on then. Excuse me, we'll check this off. And again, props to Shadow Mimicry. And so, yeah, somebody had emailed me about um, doing, uh, I think it was the one-day list. Let's see here. 
yeah, they were doing the one-day list, and they were just not clear until after the fact about needing to delete these meshes. So maybe we can change some wording or something. I don't know. Uh, Gonzo says, I think I got some of the most important depends. Yes, you did. Absolutely. absolutely. Uh, had a quick look, pulled down your changes and, and so forth, and yeah, you got like the really key stuff. You know, BCOM patches, Starwind, stuff like that. Obvious stuff, you know, carry on, I saw. So very, very good. Um, oh, yeah, and then there's the issue, uh, the ongoing issue about map gaps. And uh, our friend Andre here, he pointed out there's a gap by a Kakurt, which I haven't been over there in a minute. So I wanted to just fire it up and see, like, do we have that issue too? Um, but I was also going to suggest, <clears throat> excuse me, in the issue uh, that we we potentially have Andre run M locks and make sure that his load order is good. Um, so yeah. All right. Well, without further ado, let's just take a look at what we got for Appels. Zero's Coast. And so we say you all you need are the textures. You don't need the plugin. So um, I think this is further to some of the changes that Gonzo and I have been making while we're working on the. <laughs> the big data refactor, excuse me. And um, just like being explicit, right? Like you don't need the meshes, so delete them. So we should say something to that effect. Um, and so we're actually in the process of, might as well share this. Um, this is a very rough look at what usage notes data is gonna look like now, but we're gonna have mod list specific usage notes that are automatically selected when you load the page. You'll only see information relevant to the content you're you know, doing, such as a mod list. And so this is kind of what the data would look like. I just put some stuff in here for test purposes. We'll delete this, but just to show, and this is actually a mod that does have different setups based on what mod list you're using. Dynamic distant buildings for OpenMW here. Uh, you won't use the GhostGate plugin, for example, here, but you will here. Um, and so we would say something to that effect, and then, you know, on the page we'll do the magic for you. But uh, as you can see, it's really nothing right now, and all the usage notes still live in the data. If you go to the beta site right now, actually, there's no usage notes on anything. <laughs> Ooh, we'll get there. Anyways, for posterity, we'll put that in there, and as we continue the effort to put the data in here, we'll get that caught in there so in any case let's go to the flora and landscape so. <clears throat> oh santa if you're still there and paying attention i wanted to say i ended up grabbing cross code pretty good pretty pretty good by the way i like it i'm really liking it good steam deck fit good yeah, yeah. Oh, Gonzo's a fan. Says, "Oh man, Crosscode is awesome." I uh, I don't know why I waited for a long time. I just I think it's maybe the massive backlog of hundreds of games that I don't play, perhaps. <laughs> but it was on sale enough, and I grabbed it and immediately installed it on the old Steam Deck. And uh, oof, I gotta say, fun times. If you're on the fence about it, just get it. The last spell. Yeah, yeah. Smallio says you're on that one. All right. Yeah, we're catching your stream now and then, my dude. Let's see here. So we can say if you're following a list, <sighs> excuse me, if you're following a mod list, you should delete the, and let's, um, let's make sure I got the actual correct casing on here. So just it's, it doesn't matter, I think, for Windows people, but uh, my Unix or Linux, I guess, maybe Mac is not case sensitive. Um, most Linux setups would be, though. What did I even... Oh, architecture. No, 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 no. Oh, dear. This must be another one that I... Oh, I put it under landscapes. That's right. I have a... Am I this is one of the changes I'm planning to put on the website, by the way. We're going to split up flora and landscape to have just a flora category and just a landscape category. Makes more sense. Some of the stuff bundled together is just puzzling. It's like, eh? We got, like, actually legit flora stuff with actually legit landscape stuff, and it doesn't make sense. I got a lot of those category names, by the way, from Deceed's, um, I forget what the name is, the Step Guide for Morrowind from way back in the day. It's actually the whole, that's actually the source of inspiration for the whole steps in the website actually i wanted to do things step by step and i was really inspired by deceit's work so props okay uh yeah so it's lowercase okay the yeah. 
delete the meshes folder and the included plugin. I think that's good. Let me know what you think. And we'll go ahead and uh, actually shell that up. <clears throat> Hopefully the data is not in a Bork state at the moment. <laughs> We've been furiously hacking on all of this. So and yeah, the last thing I implemented uh, was just this tiny bit of code that puts the usage notes in the database you know, properly identified by like what mod list it's on. That's what we're doing right here. We're massaging the data to do that. Uh, it's one of the last things I did. Gonzo might be worth mentioning. You do need the rest of the files. I think you're right. I think you're right. But keep the keep the textures folder. I think that sounds good. Yeah. Let's. Uh... Re reset. Okay. <clears throat> and then, yeah, as I mentioned, so something like this. Why don't we just do one right now? We really want to, by the way, Gonzo and I have been speaking, and I think we want to have like some kind of a convention where we keep these in alphabetical order by mod. We'll see how <laughs> that works out. I think it's going to be doable. As long as all of us that work on it agree, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so it looks something like this, though. You can use the triple quotes there for a multi-line string in Tommel. Very much like we're doing already right here. In fact... I can just yank that out of there, yank it in here, and there we go. And then that is, uh, let's see, we need a four mod. And we put the title in there. Hey, Fane, good day to you and welcome. I'm very glad you're here today. Hope you're having a lovely day. Just kind of showing the new format we're going to use for um, usage notes data so that we can show people specific notes to the context they're on, be it a mod list or whatever, uh, instead of just a bunch of stuff they have to parse through. And so we identify the mod simply by the title. And actually up here, so... We don't, because now we're selecting the information based on the mod list, we don't actually need to say this anymore. We don't need to say, if you're following a mod list, we would just say, delete the blah, 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 and keep the blah, there, there you go. And so, yeah, the net effect of this is now we're pulling the usage notes out of the data here. Folder paths are already pulled out, um, and the mod data now becomes a bit more concise. Um, and I'm actually really looking forward to that. So, uh, you know, little by little, we're kind of making things uh, better in this really big improvement, actually. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is what it would look like. Um, and we just have to repeat this for every single mod in the database. No big deal, right? Hmm. Okay, well, I guess we'll consider that handled. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's not going to find its way to the main site probably for a few weeks as we crunch away on this, you know, rewrite of a big chunk of the web website's data. But anyways, yeah, so we'll take another look at this one then. Um, and right now what I'm doing is, <clears throat> excuse me, precisely before the stream, I was working uh, specifically on this. So Gonzo, as I mentioned, had added a bunch of data. Let's take a look at that. And yeah, you, so you can see right here, uh, we have, for example, uh, Beautiful Cities of Morrowind Patches, Imperial Legion Expansion, file name, and of course, uh, you know, it depends on this. It's not a hard dependency on the plugin, but like, this is the one made for BCM. And so yeah, it was just, uh, specifically, let's do a little bit of Python here. I was... Uh, Splitting out actually inserting into the database information on depends and conflicts because at this, We process these records in order And at this point in the list actually BCOM not yet processed 
So what happens is it blows up because there's no plugin yet. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to process the plugin data separately from the uh, conflicts and depths data. So what I'm going to do here is we're passing in the data, much like what we're doing down here, right? We uh, we kind of iterate through it. Except for here, we're not going to be creating a new plugin. We're just going to be you know pulling the existing plugin out of the database and putting some more information into it as needed. So I got the basic of that already written, but it was written to happen in line here. And then I realized like, oh yeah, wait a minute. I had a oh shoot moment. So let's make this work real quick. Okay, uh, yeah, so first things first, we have to, because we're not creating the plugin, we have to actually fetch the plugin out of the database. So let's do P mod objects get and we're gonna do file name from mod um okay all right so first off slow down a little bit Okay. Yes. Okay. This is going to be nasty, but here we go. I have to indent all of this stuff. I'm going to do it little blocks at a time, but we have to say... I guess this morning me didn't have enough coffee yet before I moved this in. All right. So if my Emacs setup <clears throat> was as good as I wanted it to be, I could just simply highlight all this. Like if I was using Idea or PyCharm or something, it would perfectly indent it all. But if I do that, it's just gonna, so. Maybe I can do this though. No, no, okay. Starting to lose it. <laughs> there we go. Okay. First part done. Maybe I can depend on tab more than I thought I could. Okay. This isn't so bad. Oh no! <laughs> I spoke too soon. That is wrong. Okay. There we go. No! Hmm. This is what happens when you depend on indents and white space. Python's fine. It's fine. All right, there we go. Fine. That was mildly painful. Whew. So, okay. We're not using these two arguments just yet, as is indicated by the green underline. That's fine. Evil and dense, Gonzo. Oh, yeah. Uh, Gonzo and I have been working on, you know, moving things into YAML, and we've been dealing with the fussiness of white space in there. Um, it's fine. Another thing that's fine. <laughs> so, all right. Let's see here. We're getting the plug. So, data. So, mm, I actually forget. I think the data. So, let's. I was going to say, I forget what the data is going to look like here, but let's try to look actually at it and mentally convert it from YAML to Python because that'll be fine, I'm sure. Uh, okay, so we have from... Okay, so... Mm -hmm, okay, got it. And so what I usually do here is I'll do it in a little chunk 
and just see what blows up. <laughs> Gonzo says, what's even fun funnier is my ID was doing something funky and it was because of the indents, but I didn't realize that until later. Which ID are you using, by the way, for that YAML? Is it VS Code? All right, we got the plug in there. Good, good. Yeah, okay, cool. Ah, that's interesting. <laughs> Sometimes uh, Emacs will geek out if it's like a super huge. So if like you dump a mod like Rise of Hell's Tovani to YAML and then open it up, your fr your text editor might freak out because it's like, like almost a gig, you know, text file. All right, let's see here. So we got the plugin. Depends. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, and so down here, yep. I mean, so we basically can use this code as is. I just kind of plucked it out of the other function and put it in here. We just change the way we get the mod because uh, the plugin because it already exists. I'm hoping that we have a Todd Bowman and this just works. What do you say, folks? Let's see. Um, actually, we got the e shell. Let's do it in the e shell. Come on, there you go. All right. Yeah, praying to Todd. And I'm going to have a sip while we watch it crunch. Cheers, folks. By the way, those of you that are following the Monathon, I've seen some cool stuff so far. I saw somebody had um, uh, like a turtle shell one. Hang on. Enwa in the shell. Here we go. But uh, I'm curious if any of you folks have seen some cool stuff. Let's look at this one. Cool. All right. Sorry, I just had a message from my friend, OK Hi, who uh, took care of doing the Wabajack uh, version and, and added their own spice. Open MWE Wabajack. So, yeah, anyway, got a message from them. Uh, check this out, though. NY in the shell. Not going to lie. I love that image. <laughs> ah, Herdrak says Bards of Vardenfell is a cool one, too. Okay. We're going to look at that one next, then, while this is crunching. Um, but so this is this is admittedly a little on the goofy side here. But uh, our friend Mr. Smelly's Bardenfell. Nice. I like that. NY in the shell. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Smellies. This is some cool stuff right here. Very creative. Um, and yeah, Mr. Smellies was actually in the Starwind. I saw this because he was in the Starwind Discord and said, hey, we could do an R2-D2 version of this or something. And that's kind of funny, you know, like hide into a droid. <laughs> so very cool. Got to check that one out. Uh, and you said what? Uh, Bards of Harnen from Nexus Mines. And we're done down there, but let's just load this up for real quick. Ports of... No, no, no. Oh, my. Duck, duck, go. Hang on. Let's see if Google does any better. Nope. <laughs> Help me out, Herdrax, with a link, please. Uh, in the meantime, though... Search engine fail. Double search engine fail. Oh, that's the name of the Bardenfell. Is the oh okay? Let's do it. Uh -huh. No. Thank you, thank you. We have a link. I am failing with search engines today. Bards of Bardenfell. Cool. Von Django's. Awesome. Cool. All right. Hang on. We're going to check this video. To hear the music used, check out this playlist. Uh, you know what? We're going to... We'll do that another time. But, <clears throat> excuse me. I think... This is one that we're going to actually just try in-game. Thank you, Herdrex. I appreciate that. Very cool. I like this image. Neat. I love that. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, actually, there is... It occurs to me right now... Uh... Nothing specific for us to look at, but while we were kind of chatting about other things, 
we'll note that the website is up my local version at least is up and it's up and running and um so that means that my change here i guess worked let's see shall we okay um how are we gonna see johnny i'm glad you asked let me show you we will use the django shell okay uh let's import that let's code in shall we and we're gonna do uh okay um we want to do let's do this one as an example since this is the one that was blowing up on me this morning while i was trying to enjoy my coffee um mod. Oh. all right i know what i did there don't worry Oh my, don't try this at home. Please don't try this at home. Oh my God. You didn't see that. All right. Oh, of course. I'm a dummy. Okay. No problem. <laughs> I cannot just pass it the mod name. It needs uh, the primary key. So we'll give it that. My DBA friends know what I'm talking about. Anyways, here we are. Okay, depends. Is nothing, so that's no good. Uh, we should have a. Uh, we should have this here. But just for posterity, this is also how we would access conflicting stuff. Okay. So, what is not happening is this right here. And we are simply not inserting Whoop. nothing failed here so if anything fails right if we hit any of these obviously it's gonna exit gonna give us a little message that's hopefully somewhat helpful and it will exit and we didn't get that so in theory we are fetching a mod here and that's working fine in all cases. Ooh. Okay. Just for fun. Let's see what we get. So we got Enwa in the shell, <laughs> Bards of Bardenfell. Oh, yeah, thank you, Gonzo says. Nice near shirt. Yeah, um, near automata shirt. Actually, um, I got this shirt when uh, Smallio and I went to go see the near automata orchestra live in concert uh, locally here in Rosemont by Chicago. And um, it was probably the best. Yeah, it might be the best live show I've ever seen. Um, I've been to like so many concerts, I can't even count punk and metal and stuff like that ska lots of ska and and yeah i mean it was just you know we had decent seats sit down very chill vibe right before the pandemic started even like weeks before um and it was a very i just musically um the lady who sings all the tunes was there singing for us and uh uh the the producer was there and yeah it was really really good times i loved it i have very fond memories they're coming back um in October, I think. I really want to go. I'm on the fence. The OST is really something else. I can't even imagine seeing that live. Gonzo says, yeah. I mean, so it wasn't just Automata. It was um, both of the near games. The kind of And they had like a... So what was cool about it was they had the orchestra. They had the vocalists. And then they had like an audiovisual show where they showed scenery from the games and like poetry and stuff like that. I mean, it was... Pfft. They come to your area. Get on it. It's totally worth seeing. All right. 
Wow. So you'll note. <laughs> oh. Johnny. Are you are you daft? Yes, yes, I am daft. <laughs> it just occurred to me now that I babbled about Nier Automata enough. Um, we're not actually running this function anywhere. Oops. So let's do that. Mm, okay. Uh -huh. We're going to yank this out of here. We're going to process conflicts and do depths. And we can just basically copy pasta that. Boom. All right. Yeah, in the world of game soundtracks, Near Automata, it's on my playlist for sure. That was a five disc set I think I got. It's a big one. All right, so while that's crunching, let's take a look here. I definitely wanted to fire up my local game. We'll jump into Potato Land and see. Um, the latest picture. Yeah, this one. Right here. So I wonder. Ah, they won't be near you, Gonzo says. Okay, yeah. <laughs> definitely keep an eye out. And yeah, this is a nasty one, right? Oof. Um, but it looks like kind of an area that you could easily miss, right? It's a big map. Well. So Vivek Temple. I wonder is there... Well, let's get in there, shall we? Um, I don't need to... There we go. And uh, sort of on this note, too, kind of tangential, um, we're looking at discussing uh, Doors of Oblivion, the mod, apparently, is kind of having a rediscovery moment. And uh, it seems there's some really neat Daedric Shrine mods that have come out in the past few weeks that use assets from it. There's kind of a dubious situation there with those. Um, so really looking forward to how that develops, but maybe we'll take a look at some of those as well. Um they make the Daedric Ruins look more as they are described in the in-game text. Gray color and stuff. Uh, a good friend, Ezzy, of mine, has made a mod that does this and even makes them glow, too. It's really cool, so. Oh, my. <laughs> All right. We just had another auto-mod moment. Here we go. We're going to allow it. I was able to see the FF7 remake concert last year. That was amazing. I saw someone play the chains to the Shinra music. Really added a lot of depth that blew me away, Gonzo says. Awesome. That's sweet. I really want to try to make it a point to see as many, you know, game orchestra concerts as I can because, like, yeah, like I said, the Nier was just a way different experience than I was used to. Nobody was trying to punch me in the face, as usually happens at metal shows. You know, I didn't have to be like, you know. It's always good. All right, so yeah, actually, this is a new feature I noticed in one of the uh, uh, no mosh at orchestras, yeah, <laughs> in the nightly builds I have to look into, but uh, the, the latest dev build of OpenMW, when I start my game, I can't move for like a cool 15 seconds. I don't know what that is. So anyway, we're in potato mode right now. Let's go check this out. Oh, Santa Hul says, I saw Dinosaur Jr., all old guys, no mosh. It was nice. Sweet. I bet that was a cool, chill show. Dinosaur Jr. is great. Let's put the map up here. All right, well, he's at, uh, so, Vivek Temple. Where'd you see Dinosaur Jr. at, Santa? Chicago, I assume. Oh, my gosh, my potato is struggling on this. <clears throat> Gotta love that undersea ground cover, huh? Props to Acid Zebra. Our friend. All right. Um, venue by my house. Oh, okay. What's that? It's not the orphanage. 
Well, so what is this? Radius. Okay, that's a new place. I moved out of Chicago long ago. Pay no attention, by the way, to the pink bellows back there missing a texture. We had a HD Forge update. Uh, something was borked there. I'll look at that later. Right now we're trying to find this locale, though. So what's this scenery? Hmm. Looks like an AMC movie theater, huh? Well, all right, then. So there's probably some rocks or some such. Let's go up a little bit here. Oh, maybe over here? Okay, wait. I think we're getting closer. I think this is by it. Such a seam should be obvious, though, if we have it too. If I have it too here. I mean, it's pretty nasty. Let's look back at Andre's picture here. He's looking north. So let's do that as well. Couldn't be over here, could it? Ooh, yeah, so actually, <laughs> this area changed by one of the really neato uh, landscape mods that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so you can notice that it like, looks really snazzy over here. That's because of said mod. I'm gonna have to plug that real quick. Um, let me just pull down my map. Uh, yeah, we can even notice a little, it looks a little bit more neat over here and that would be the name of the mod escapes me at the moment but we'll take a look at my config and we'll we'll peek at it specifically all right um anyways replicating andre's problem <sighs> i don't think this is the right place though and certainly the map doesn't match up Right, because his map. So I feel like we got to be on the other side, maybe, of the temple. I'm looking on the wrong side even, probably. Okay. Oh, here you go. Do you see it? I kind of figured it would stick out. Well, there you go. That's no good. There it is, indeed. Um. Okay, so, you know, what we have to do at this point. We have to figure out what mod makes changes to the landscape in this cell. What cell is this? It's a good question. Merged lands would probably patch that right up. Yeah, indeed, Gonzo. I would think. Um, okay, yeah, Rise of the Tribe Unmourned. Right, row. Let's go ahead and stop the game. Let's yank that one out. See what it looks like. That tool makes me a little nervous, though. Huh? Gonzo, uh, I'm not familiar, actually. Would you kindly drop a link for me? Um... I'm trying to remember what Delta plugin does with land records. Um, Cause I know I've had discussions with Benjamin about it. Specifics are escaping me, but yikes. I don't know. We might, uh, we might have to, we were talking yesterday a little bit. Herdrax, I'm glad you're here today. We were talking a little bit about the possibility of dropping Saboteur facility. And you and I had spoken priv privately about, uh, changes to the quest mod lineup and I'm thinking maybe Rise of the Tribe Unmourned might be might be due for retiring just because uh, you know causing issues like this so anyway let's uh, thank you so much Gonzo delivering a link here a tool for merging lands into ES3 mods Interesting. 
I feel like we should try this right now, but I'm going to have to compile it. I'm willing to bet they don't have a... Maybe? Let's see. No. Well, let's run it with wine. Oh, yeah. Gonzo says it worked for an annoying seam I had when I merged Red Mountain Reborn. Interesting. Red Mountain Reborn seems like it would be a pain. And one of the reasons why I avoided it, one of a few reasons why I avoided it, was because it seemed like it would be a pain for land seam reasons. Uh, you know, can we can we fix this right now? With this tool. If so, it's another tool we should put into our toolbox, and I'll probably make a, pro a pull request here to uh, add a Linux binary to their build. Because, I mean, it's Rust. Why not? Uh, yeah, so let's... Merged lands. Thank you for the call-out, Gonzo. That is excellent. Only a little tiny seam that you could find, and the tool patch it right up. Gonzo says, awesome. Yeah, man, it, too bad we can't... Uh, there's other seams that we can't auto-fix like that, such as the caverns revamp stuff that you and I have talked about privately. Uh, definitely would like to fix those, but I think somebody with some blender skill is going to have to go in there and actually patch the the meshes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so wait, uh, does this thing even... Does this read OpenMW files? Config files? No, it does not. Okay. <sighs> so to use this, because it doesn't support OpenMW, we have to copy all of our plugins into a data files folder, add them to the Morrowind.ini, and then run it. Um, and I'm not going to mess with all that right now. Um, truly unfortunate. That being said, I'm going to uh, bring this up to uh, to Benjamin and see if we can just get this kind of a thing in Delta Plugin or something. Because, um, yeah, I mean, Delta Plugin already is a thing that, that, that does, you know, plug in the introspection. So, yeah, I'm going to bring that up. And uh, thank you again, Gonzo, for sharing. Uh, Hurdrak says, if we go forward with the new methodology of quest mods, smaller, cleaner section as part of TO plus optional quests, new land section as a separate list, I also think older, buggier mods that creates a lot of conflicts can just be moved to the main, moved out of the main TO quest section. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking too. And we can, you know, they are represented by the quest category. So if people are, like, hungry for more, they can always just go look at that and add them in. And the, at that point, the CFG generator will be good enough where you could use it as a reference for how to configure your tweaked list safely. Yeah, if that could be in Delta, holy crap. Gonzo says, yeah, I think it could. Uh, Benjamin is extremely receptive to, uh, you know just me using Delta plugin and figuring out what I need. Uh, yeah, for example, I was trying to, uh, let's take a look here. We have, for example, I was trying to look at, uh, so we have, when you run total overhaul, you may have a lot more script warnings than I have, but we got a couple right here. These aren't the exact ones that I was trying to track down, but Hey, this is a new one. It looks like slave ship slaves. Yay. This is a new one. Um, Every single case I've looked into of this error, by the way, invalid operator equals treating it as double equals, 100% fine. It's just an annoying warning. However, when you uh, when you have, I don't know, I'm just going to guess 400 plus plugins like I have, it's difficult to know what plugin provides that script. A lot of the vanilla plugins have compiled scripts and stuff, you know, so you can't exactly just like grab binary data because you just got a blob for the scripts. So it's difficult. Um, and one of the things we could do, though, theoretically, is we could do a Delta plugin query, um, something like this, where I'm looking, for example, to just see does Patch for Purist do anything to Vanjira? The answer is no. Or I could do this. Uh, oh, Johnny, what are you doing? Shh. We 
could query my uh, whoa okay we'll query my total overhaul list and we can see records for Vanjira and it's going to come up with some stuff there we go we have one record but unfortunately it doesn't tell me what plugin changes it and so that's something i ran by benjamin hey can we have it you know say the thing and and he was cool with it so we'll have that probably soon um and we'll be able to say like oh you know we got this so-and-so script query my load order and tell me what file provides that same with vanjira what file provides that edit you know um there we go and actually this is something i want to look at today too somebody in the wabajack support room has reported not being able to find vanjira for the related quest she was just kind of going, and it turns out that's in the, uh, you know, the Molagamora region by Molagmar, kind of. She's supposed to be by some bridge, so I figured maybe we could go in there and look at it. Um, her drag says, in the long run, I plan to implement at least a basic set of console workaround guides to older quest mods. That way, they're at least, they at least can be functional on a TO player playthrough, even out of the list. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's, that's... I think that's step one to uh, preserving these mods, right? Like making sure that they're usable in some way and, and continue to be. Okay. Uh, okay, conflicts and depths, we were not. <laughs> we kind of went all over the place here. And now we're back to this is what I was working on. All right. We were not, so we were not getting any dependencies, right? Did my back scroll get eaten? No, here it is, okay. Yeah, we left off. No bet, no dependencies. What gives? And then I noted in the e show, ooh, okay, here's a problem. Cool. Invalid literal for in so this is the same thing that happened to me in the shell. I was trying to pass the name instead of the actual mod with the primary key. My DBA friends know what I'm talking about. Mm, let's see here. Excuse me here. So we get the mod, we try to attach it here. What is below Starwind Endor? Starwind Enhanced. Oh no, so it is blowing up on Starwin Endor, the very first one that has the depends. Alright, good. That's good. Excuse me. the wrong line 12 is the right line oh good cool duh right there and right biting me in the face here okay so we actually need to do this mm. wow yeah what I'm probably going to do later on today is I'm going to take this kind of logic right here of try to get a mod, except it does not exist. I'm going to make a little helper for that because we're doing this pattern like all over the place in here. And it's we have to do it yet again right here. Uh, so let's just type it out. I'm not going to deal with indent fussy. All right, try. Uh, M1. 
and that will be M2, I guess. I don't know. Won't be an issue when I have the plugin dried up, and that's don't repeat yourself, DRY. Mod objects get main. And so we're D from mod. I think we actually need to do here if from mod in D. And then we'll catch on. And we'll say, um, we'll say, um, Mod for plugin doesn't exist. That's just a repeat of another one we do somewhere else in the file. All right, now we can say M1 here. <sighs> Thank you, language server. M1 is possibly unbound. This is a duck type language pretending to be typed right here. It would yell at me for so if this were go I would have to do something like I would have to define m1 you know allocate it with the compiler um and so this is like an awkward position for python where it's like no I want to be statically typed but I'm not really I'm fine with typing in python I really am but it's like uh, I don't know I would like it better if my editor support was better. Space Farmer, my man, welcome back. It's been a minute. I'm glad you're here today. Hope you're having a great day. Python boo, you say. I mean, hey, I can appreciate that. You know, the language, uh, it's not my favorite anymore. Definitely not my favorite anymore. Um, oh, and speaking of languages, code and stuff, and Rust, there was uh, Section 8's randomizer thing that I wanted to look at yesterday. We didn't get a chance. Um, yeah, Farmer says, yeah, whatever gets the job done. Indeed, right? Like, at the end of the day, I wrote this website in Python back when it, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Um, and Python's fine. It's a good language. Definitely great to learn on, you know? Um, it just, it's, un, you know, it's the language has changed a lot since I started to learn how to program, for sure. They add features a lot more readily where Python didn't change so much before. It would go decades without changing. A uh, decade. Zig. Ah, uh, Space Farmer says, I installed Zig yesterday. Nice. Zig is something I hear a lot about and I'm really interested in, you know. Um, have you looked at that? No, I have not. Um, just I know that there's a lot of people commenting about Zig on, um, you know, various tech websites I read. And, and it comes up a lot in Rust discussions. It's like, a, hey, you know, you're into the things Rust would give you. Check out Zig. Seems good, though. Seems really good. Um for a future project maybe i don't know we need, still need to make like a rust is appealing because we have a wealth of tes3 file reading capabilities there right like you have great greatness sevens library you have benjamin winger's code we can read our content pretty readily with rust you know so um for openmw project zig is like kind of a bleak prospect because we would be sort of inventing the wheel all right so what we're blowing we blew up here obviously but we got really far down actually Mm. key error file name okay I goofed that's for sure um, but you know what time to sit down please excuse me All right, so key error on line 45. What did I goof this time? Right here. 
Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Every mod plugin should have a file name. Maybe we got a typo here. File name. There we go. Editor Linter is not going to catch a typo like that, unfortunately. Um, I feel like language server probably, well, I don't know. It would have to be aware of my data source, so I guess not. It's a valid key. Um, yeah, well, we're actually rounding up the first hour. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the list. And yeah, that's already checked up. This is coming up. And actually, yeah, one of the things I wanted to do was um, take a look at some of the category split ups that I talked about. Just really quickly, we can uh, create the new just floor category, just landscape category. We don't have to move everything over yet, um, but there's also a category I wanted to create of testing mods because uh, with the new CFG generator, we're going to want to make sure that we test all the different, this mod has a plugin, this mod does not have a plugin, this mod has a plugin with a dependency and so forth. And basically every kind of situation we care about, we want to test. So um, we'll have a variety of different hand-picked mods that we'll throw in there um, for the tests. But for now, we'll just create the category empty. And I got to kind of think about, you know, as we do this um, data transfer, we got to think about what's good to use for a test case there. So, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see here. Whoop. Are we crunched yet? Are we crunched? Ah, cool. Okay. So even though our process for maintaining the data is a little tedious, thankfully, we already I already have in place, uh, you know, safeguards for if we make a goof. Uh, in the code, and in this case, what we have here is we actually have two mod plugins of the same name coming from different mods. That's cre That's weird, Johnny. Show me more. Okay. So let's see here. We got uh, ST Books. Where's base? Okay, yeah, yeah. So um, right here we're saying where's base, but it comes from two mods actually. So we need to say. I happen to know that comes from Where's Ultimate. Okay. Crunch it again. And while that's doing it, let's, uh, what do I got here? Oh yeah, we're trying to, uh, one of the mods I would like to add for 6.x is a Odai Plateau, plateau uh, kind of revamp. But there's some floating rocks, and I was trying to work out using Delta plugin to filter those out. So this is kind of my notes. Um, started wanting to use TS3 command, but, you know, we want to phase that out. We want to move away from that. Delta plugin can actually do it in a nice way. It will uh, let us filter specifically the rock records, not have to nuke everything in that cell, which may include grass on the other side of the river. We want to do that if we don't have to. So, yeah, this would be the ID of the rocks. Uh, it's a, the one and two, I believe. Um... And yeah, my intention is to just create a filtered plugin and probably just redistribute that rather than make everybody have to do it themselves. Did it blend? It's blending. Uh, well, we're not quite at plugins yet, so I won't say that it's blending just yet. Uh, anywho, though, let's let's look at this diff though. Enough of that diff. Let's look at this diff. The ongoing journey here just quickly scan these sections we already did in case there's something I added I have been throwing stuff in here there and here and there uh, yeah okay no not this section mm -hmm. nothing here We do this 
one first person animation pack. Hmm, I'm drawing a blank on that one. Let's take a quick look. Adventures backpack, same situation here. We'll fix that in a bit. Yep. Nexus mods. Yeah, okay. Definitely using that, so let's just put it on there. Let's make sure we got it at least. Alright. Nope. Go ahead and uh, put that in there. And yeah, this one, now that I'm, my memory is being jogged, <clears throat> our friend Johannes uh, shared the link for this one. And yeah, it's just some, some tweaks to the weapon swings and stuff like that. I like them. I like them. I think it's worth throwing in there. Um, like, not all the vanilla animations are complete garbage. I would say none of them are complete garbage. Because many of them are kind of janky. And these fix that. I mean, none of these are janky, you know. They're good animations, so. Play this video right here. Our favorite Morrowind trope. The naked Nord over there. Yeah, I like that, that poke animation. I mean, I don't know, to end the swing and everything. Just it looks, looks great. We're going with it. Ooh, Morrowind trivia time, everybody. Here we go. Gonzo asks, how many naked Nords are in the game? Three? You know, off the top of my head, I don't know. We need a, a resident expert on naked Nords. Somebody please help us out. <laughs> Three uh, in just the base game, not including Tribunal. Maybe including Tribunal. There's three. I don't know. <laughs> Asking the hard questions. Four with Tribunal. Okay. Herdrax delivers. That's. I think that's what I thought. But man, it's been a... I've ignored the Nords for a minute just because those are ones, you know, like you do those right away. The first Your first playthrough, you probably want to... You want to talk to those guys. What's going on? Why are you naked, man? <clears throat> At least, you know, that was going on in my head. Playing it on the Xbox back in the day. Which I really, I had a thought today that I wanted to fire up the Xbox emulator and play Morrowind on an emulator uh, with my PS4 controller, you know. Um, but I couldn't get it to work. Morrowind doesn't boot. Cool, okay, yeah. Reanimations, first person animation pack. So yeah, props to Max Yari. Thank you for doing it. And this is cool, uh... I should point out that this is cool because, oh, <laughs> her Jack says, plus that pantless dumber down by the river in Nisus. Right, I forgot about that guy. And I actually didn't discover him until, like, you know, recent years, you know. I didn't see that guy on Xbox. Harder to notice stuff like that on Xbox because you couldn't see two feet in front of you. Animation. So this one is cool because it utilizes... Uh, some OpenMW specific features here about, uh, well, maybe maybe MGE has this feature now. I don't know. Um, hey, hey, Altario, glad you're here. Um, welcome, and I hope you're having a great day. Uh, we strive to include at least one naked Nord per Tamriel rebuilt region. Yes, I'm so glad to hear that. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll take that as the official stance on naked Nords from the project. So uh, I approve. Excellent. <laughs> so that puts... Naked Nords, let's see. So we got four in the base game. And then how many TR regions are we at now? One, two, hey, yeah, yeah. 
uh one two three four we're at four regions now right released uh so that puts us at eight naked nords i think correct me if i'm wrong but either way that's like that's good very good I feel like we need to introduce another trope too, like, I don't know, like Fargoth's relatives or something like that, right? Like, Fargoth's got relatives living out in TR and stuff. I don't know. Anybody ever thought of that? Fargoth is the horse that can never be beaten too much. AFFA has proven that. Four maps, yeah, okay. The new update will include first area of map seven. Ooh, super hype. That's awesome. Really looking forward to that. I love all the work from you folks. You rock. All right. Going back to the additions. So, yeah, just trying to review things, making sure that we got everything. Because my, my setup is a little discombobulated here. I'm looking at a diff for Todd's sake. What is wrong with me? Yeah, Herjack says, man, can't wait for next TR release. I know, right? That's basically been me ever since I found out about TR. <laughs> like way back in the day when I first got Morrowind, 2005. I remember hearing about it and thinking like, oh, it's going to be, that's going to be the best thing ever. And here we are. It's amazing. Perhaps. Uh, normal maps for everything. We don't need to go there just yet. Uh, okay. We got everything covered in here. Trees. We got these. Yep. Ooh, landscapes. All right. Not going to give any release dates, but it's looking good. Nice. Yeah, no, we don't need you to, you know, there's no committing. We all do this stuff for fun, right? Like, so, but yeah, awesome. Love to hear that. We love you guys here. So we love all you folks. Anyways, this is the one I was talking about, though, when we were looking at the seam, the texture seam. We got Little Landscapes, Vivek Islands. We'll jump to this one first because we actually saw that one in game. And these are nice, um, these Little Landscape mods. Have been really cool. I've been really loving them and spicing up the. Uh, all right, Duck Duck Go challenge accepted. Tr rocks so hard you could mix it up with high rock sometimes. Ifain says, <laughs> "Nice, yeah." Uh, okay, well this is interesting. Duck Duck Go is having a moment. I guess we're getting the the Reddit link. All right. Um, well, this is just a gallery. Excuse me, please. Here we go. Silly duck, duck, go. There we go. And yeah, Glitter Gear, uh, the creative individual I uh, mentioned before working on the um, Daedric Shrines based on the Doors of Oblivion content, and it just looks really outstanding. I didn't get a close look at everything, but I kind of quickly flew around Vardenfell and, and took a peek at things, and yeah. I actually hadn't looked at this one yet until we were over there. That's why it kind of caught me by surprise, but yeah, we were just looking at them. Yay. Uh, and it's a nice touch, right? Like, you could never even look at these islands, really, and now it's like there's something there for you to see. So I love it. I really love it. Galen's quest mod. We'll be having that one too. I don't think we added that one yet, but it's coming. Without this mod. With this mod, Galen takes the Blake Island. So yeah. Total overhaul 6.x and expanded vanilla. Going to look like this. So can't wait. Hype. Hype. And also secondary hype for Do Doors of Oblivion because I, th I do think one way or another we're going to add that one whether it's as of yet in progress update that I keep hearing about that uh, Details Devil and others are working on or um, Revenor of the Mop and Project Atlas Project has a fork on GitLab, GitHub. Let me look at that one right now. And I put this link in uh, modding OpenMW Discord channel. But this is the one I'm talking about here. And yeah, they obviously did a lot of work on cleaning up the assets here. So it's just, uh, you know, it's a matter of time. We have somebody here uh, 
who has a, a couple weeks ago mentioned conflict, this specific conflict, you know. So the wheels are in motion. Things are happening. I love this community. We'll sort it out. But looking forward to having both Doors of Oblivion and Glitter Gears Daedric Shrine overhauls, which we will... Let's just go over here. Take a look at some of these. Ooh, this is like brand new. Ooh. This one doesn't depend on Doors of Oblivion. Adding it right now. Nice. It doesn't. Something in the water. Periite Daedra Quest. Cool. Very neat. Something in the water. Climb down the well. Cool. Okay. I love this. Let's put it on. Uh, do we have a quest section yet? No. Uh, I'll just stick it right here. There's no particular order for this right now. It's a little bit anarchy. little diversion here. We will still look at the shrines. Don't you worry. Poof. And I'll install that one a bit later. Very nice. Uh, excuse me. So what I'm talking about is yeah, like this one and 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 this one. So these are really nice. And although some of the assets from Doors of Oblivion that you can get on the Nexus Mods version, they're a little low res. Um, as I mentioned, you know, people in the community are working on giving them some love. Um, the unfortunate thing about this is that, uh, you know, there's Daedric Ruins revamp by SVNR, which is absolutely beautiful. This would negate that, I think. Maybe not completely. I don't know. Uh, I didn't take a close enough look, but that's something we keep in mind as we mix the two. Yeah, just these look so cool. I I love the you know I love the assets. Like it's honestly, this one looks cool too. This one replaces one of the vanilla with a shrine to Vermina, and it just looks really neat. They did such a cool job creating the assets that we can use to create other, you know. Oblivion Realms, and yeah, it just it, requir it requires this one, so. We'll get there, probably by the time, perhaps by the time, uh, you know, we get everything squared away with the CFG refactor and putting the list together. Maybe there'll be some movement on this and we can actually get our toast in the water. But uh, until then, we can still thoroughly enjoy these other works. Okay. This one's gonna go little landscapes appropriately. We'll fit into the landscapes category. Oh yeah, I already got Bitter Coast Waterway on there. We looked at that one previously hmm. actually I installed this one but haven't actually had time to go in game and look at it so let's do that in a minute but you know this is the anybody who plays the game has walked this path I think probably there's a chance you can take another way to Balmora, but, uh, you know, there's a good chance you've walked this path before, and uh, this looks nice. Very nice waterfall. I love that. I know exactly where that is. Yeah, you've seen that guar before. I know you have. Wow, okay. All right. Cool. Nice, Herdrek says, Little Landscapes is really solid, and it doesn't seem to have too many problems to make it fit into TL. Cool, all right. Um, 
I think for stuff like this, so we have an individual issue for AFresh, um, but I think for stuff that were other things that we're adding, maybe we can make comments in this issue, right? So like if there's a floater or something in any of these, we would maybe make a note and kind of reference it. Um, keep track of it. Patch it as needed. I'm hoping that there's a way we can automatically fix floaters with Lua, though, honestly. Right? Like, so if we can detect the ground beneath the base, and we can, like, plop it down, maybe. I don't know. Just a thought. Oh. Don't try this at home. Path to Pelagiad, okay. Vivek Islands. We're beginning to fill in kind of all the little... You went BCOM, making the cities nice. Now everybody's taking a stab at everything in between. I'm okay with it. And OpenMW's object paging is going to do us a favor and help keep the engine performant and, and balance visual clarity with performance. You know, we're not going to have a bunch of junk loaded when it need not be rendered, rather. Uh, Vivek Islands... Oh, got that one open twice. Oh, whoops. And so this one, as I mentioned, has the floaters. We're going to uh, note that and fix it eventually. Delta plugin doesn't quite have the precise feature that I need to fix this, um, which is selecting a cell and then in that set, selecting a cell. So the cell we're looking at is unnamed. It doesn't have a name. It's just coordinates. No ID, as it were. Um Various programs select cells based on either their name or in the absence of the name, they use the, the coordinates. Anyway, Delta Plugin can't let me select the cell and then delete references uh, selected by a regex within that cell. But I ran it by Benjamin, and he's cool with it. Um, so, you know, whenever that drops, we'll do that. And we can uh, even maybe provide it to the author as a patch, you know, for for users if they would accept it. Um, yeah, we already did that one. And that'll be a cool thing to look at, too, just kind of as a demonstration of how powerful Delta Plugin can be um, for tracking resources. Um, as I mentioned earlier, right, like finding what plugin provides a script out of hundreds. Uh, but also, like, yeah, having a fine-grained access to, like, shave out resources the way we need to do here for this. Right now, with TS3 command, we could just nuke the cell refs uh, in the cell from the plugin, which would probably also cut out grass and things that we don't want to get rid of. So, this will let us be a little more precise. Okay, yeah, wow, look at this. Nice little section we got here. This is, whew, so much good stuff here. So, so much. All right. Um, yeah, well, let's go in the game real quick and look at that. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, when I start the game now, as of, I think, the past couple of days, I have to do a bisect and see what commit did this. But there appears to be a new bug in OpenMW or something. And I can't move. The So watch the output behind my game there. I think it's a clue about what's happening here. Okay. You can do it, little buddy, little potato. All right. Yes, I can't... I can turn by moving the mouse, but I can't actually move my player. I don't know what's going on. I thought there would be something down there, but that global has received event that is not related. There we go. Whoa, finally. All right. Yeah, something. The joys of using dev builds. <sighs> I 
It didn't rain, Smalio, but there's a blight storm. Please, for the love of Todd. Uh, yeah, though, uh, this is what we got right here. As you can see, weather is always causing fuss, Gonzo says. Yeah, right, like, I just want to take a look at a nice piece of scenery, and it's going to give me a blight storm. Really? <sighs> here we are, though. Um, and yeah, as you can see, so we got these rocks here just kind of happily... But yeah, very nice, right? Like, it actually looks like we're approaching a city here instead of like, uh, nice fog though. Farmer says, yeah, so like it is a nice effect. Very nice effect. But like with this mod now, it actually looks like you're approaching a city, right? Like Balmora in, in uh, the vanilla game, it's like kind of awkward. It's like bare wilderness kind of. And oh yeah, by the way, you're in a city. I see, I love these cliffs here. These cliff meshes are really cool. And is Design-wise, it's, I think, a part of what Morrowind is missing compared to newer games. Um, you just got, like, this bubbly landscape here that's everywhere that you can just kind of, you know, hike over. And then you turn around and it's like, oh, yeah, wait. Um, oh, yeah. So this doesn't happen on Windows, right? You folks using Windows, you're not getting this. You can see the shadows kind of doing something funky there. I have no idea what that is. But that's a that's another bug. That we got in the dev builds here. Hopefully not a Linux specific issue. What the heck is this? Nope. Yeah, so this is the thing. I told you about this, Gonzo, I think. Yeah, something's happening here. I don't know what this is. Shadows, normal maps, both of them. Clearly geeking out. Try to ignore that. <laughs> and yeah, this is a nice little mod here. You don't get that even on the dev build. Okay, it's got to be... I bet you it's, uh, oh, you're a few weeks old. Oh, okay, grab one, because this is new, I think, in the past week or so. Maybe grab a new one if you can and let me know. Normal maps, disco style, Hordrek says. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> and then I got a little frustrated. Wait, tell me it's not doing another. It's another blight storm. Are you kidding me? Did I maybe, like, change regions here? No, no, I'm in Escadian. Well, West Gash region, okay, yeah, maybe I did. The regions kind of like snake around weird like a Chicago voting district. So yeah. Um, cool, Gonzo. Thank you. Appreciate that. Give it a test. I know this sounds bad. I hope you get it too. I hope it's not a Linux only issue. And not only that, I think it would not only be Linux only, but it may be Mesa only because um, all my machines that have this issue, this laptop, my gaming PC, my Steam Deck, we're all using Mesa AMD. So, Okay, Herdrex, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, has the latest dev build? No such issue. So, okay. Um, I'm wondering now if somebody on Linux with an NVIDIA graphics card would have this. Using the proprietary drivers would have this issue, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and predict no, probably. I digress, though. Props. Because this is really great. And yeah, so we should be able to just use Delta Plugin to select just these floaters right here in this section of... Uh, I don't know. Let's just do a quick ORI here. So I've been selecting on, yeah, minus three, minus four is the cell. And we should be able to pick that cell and then nuke the, you know, whatever the ID I had in the notes. Um, and that would just leave the, that would, I don't know if this is cell three dot four, three minus three minus four also, but you can see there's some grass there. We want to leave that alone. It's fine. Um, as a further note, I think the proper long-term solution would be to regenerate the grass, obviously, with this and with BCOM loaded. So we could get grass on top of these ridges, right? Because they're conspicuously bare. It looks a little awkward. Um, I just wish generating grass wasn't so terrible. Maybe I'll run that by Benjamin. Okay, well, yeah, so... Regardless, um, oh, look, there's more floating rocks here, kind of. No, wait. I think these are fine. It's a little dark, I can't tell. 
No, no, that's not fine. <laughs> it's a floating rock. So actually, yeah, there's quite a few here that we're going to have to handle in some way or another. Um, hmm. For now, this one's going on the to-do list, and uh, you know we'll try to handle it either by regenerating the grass for the AI region. But it's important to note, um, Eddie informed me that actually, uh, uh, Gonzo says his looks fine. Okay, uh, Linux problems. Um, as I was saying, though, Eddie pointed out, Eddie was quick to point out when I complained to him about this issue that uh, we have the, uh, oh, no, that's not the folder I want. For the love of Todd. All right, here we go. We have ground cover. So we have the Ramiros. Just as an example, we have them named by the region. So you might be forgiven for thinking, for example, that the AI plugin contains all the records for Escadian Isles. You would be forgiven. But actually, records for Escadian Isles are also included in the WG plugin. And it turns out the naming comes... The naming is not where the records are distributed, but the naming indicates... Excuse me. The specific objects they provide. So WG provides the West Gash rocks placed wherever, not just the West Gash. AI provides the AI items wherever they would be. Maybe mostly AI, but yeah. So the naming is a little confusing, but that's how they were developed. And so if we were to uh, regenerate, we would need to probably regenerate this one and this one at minimum. So anyways... Let's go back to here, and we have that on there. Good, good. All right, well, let's continue on then. So we've uh, we fleshed out uh, landscapes again. It was recently padded up a bit. And I hope that we'll further flesh it out some more. Actually, the, um, the shrine mods would probably go, since they would have to load after Doors of Oblivion, they would just go under that in the quest section. But anyway, we'll figure that out when we get there. Yeah, okay, a couple of, uh, couple of moves here. Foyata Mamea going into the landscapes. It's not really a flora mod. But other than that, nothing we need to look at right now. Okay, Telvani Bug Musk. I can't remember if I added that one. Sure did. All right, we're good. Lonely Towers. Oh, no, yeah, we sure did. Cool, okay. That one's just new paths. We don't need to... Just occurred to me though. We should note here. Whoop. We should note here about the floaters. one Caldera Governors Governor got it okay good uh, Mines and Caverns okay Now that's not right Uh, and 
we'll throw in with that one. We got the better Dunmer, better Dunmer strongholds in there already. But we do not have this one. Oh, come on. <laughs> You're killing me. Here we go. Search engine failed today for me. I don't know. All right. This is the one. <laughs> duck, duck, stop, right? <laughs> no, you will not get that. Yeah, I didn't actually get down here to take a look at this one yet. Um, I want to say I heard about this one from Herdrax, who I think has been in there, um, to take a look at it. Looks good, though. Looks really nice. Very atmospheric. Nice use of modern assets. Which is why we love all these. Okay, all right. Yeah, another one from Glitter Gear. Awesome stuff. Dungeon details. I love it. Nice. All right. And then we have uh, uh, yet another one. Actually, this recommendation comes from Johannes. Thank you so much for sharing that on Discord. Come on, DuckDuckGo. You can do it. You can do it, little buddy. I know you can find this one. Oh, no. <laughs> what did I do? Uh, I somehow triggered Firefox settings. So, okay. DuckDuckGo can be forgiven for that one. Let's hope I didn't do it again. There we go. It worked. I don't want the file, though. Just, whatever. I can see why they would give you a quick link to the file, but hey, we want to read about it first before we download it, folks. Come on. <laughs> right? Wow, this is a nice picture. Looking good. Again, with the modern assets. That's cool. It's pretty dark. I don't know if you can see it, but... There's a cool rail asset there and looking very nice. Needless to say, it's going in. I only uh, just added it earlier and haven't had a chance to jump in there. Yeah, right. And Gonzo says Indiana Jones Minecraft, minecart level. Uh, yeah, for sure. Which. Now that you say that, I'm thinking, like, why don't we have a minecart minigame? <laughs> we need, like, you want to talk about minecart levels? We could go full Donkey Kong Country minecart levels. Why not? Minigames in TR. Just saying. Just planting seeds. my caves. There we go. Okay. Cool deal. And uh, uh, trains, magic roller coasters. Yeah, right. We can do it all eventually. Maybe. I also want to have like a I feel like we can do a lore-friendly Mario Kart mod. Oh, really? Trains are a controversial topic in PTR. Interesting. Hmm. I never realized it was a topic at all, but I guess, you know, uh, as just as I was talking about lore-friendly kart races, right? <laughs> Which we could do, right? The Dwemer, I heard, were developing race carts like you see in Mario Kart. It's a fact. Todd told me. Okay, yeah. That's it for the Caves and Dungeons for now, at least. Chariot racing, okay. 
chariot racing could potentially uh space farmer says chariot racing as a idea yeah uh that could actually potentially fit right especially in cyrodiil <laughs> gonzo says mike told me yeah mike totally told me about that by the way that's a fact all right moving on here Speechcraft. Got it. For the right price. Got it. Yeah, we've been through here already. Race is respected. All of this. Pickpocket. All of this. Ooh, but some of these we didn't. Do we have better blight? Okay, we got it. Practical necromancy. I don't think we got to this one. Let's take a look at this one. I love this one. Uh, okay, hi. Actually told me about this one. I never heard about it. Open MW exclusive, as I recall. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Duck, duck, go. You can do it. Uh, yeah. With this mod, players may learn to raise permanent undead followers and trap the souls of NPCs using black soul gems. A skilled enough necromancer can learn to transcend the bounds of mortality and become a powerful undead lich. Uh, sounds pretty cool. I barely played with it, but I've been playing with it. Um, haven't done like a serious playthrough. Kind of waiting for a few things to drop into 0 0.49, a few disco normals to get fixed. Uh, but yeah, I feel like this is exactly what we're looking for on Total Overhaul, Expanded Vanilla. Stretch that game out. So yeah, this will go under, I think, gameplay, right? Practical Necromancy is not specifically a magic thing. Definitely open to better ideas about naming, as always. If anybody feels divinely inspired by Todd to give me a name. All right, let's go ahead and close some of these tabs up, shall we? Okay. All right, Practical Necromancy. Cool. And the next one up, I think this is... Uh, I think this is a balance and nerfing. <laughs> Herdrak says, on the topic of holding on for the next playthrough, did Half-11 give a more solid ETA on PFP update? No. No, and I will not expect a more solid ETA. You know, um, as much as I'm really holding, I am. That's another thing I'm holding out for. Patch for Pierce update. You don't want to update that mid run. You just don't. It's going to be a bad time. Um, but you know, it's a big mod, bigger than anything I can imagine being responsible for. And uh, you know, it's a passion project. So unfortunately, no, I haven't heard anything. Uh, Occasionally, I will check the comments section on Nexus mods just to see. Because Half-11 is active on there, right? People will report problems, and they'll emerge and kind of give hints about the next update. As of now, though, no. Okay, better bound items. This is a really great one that I found recently. I'm not sure if somebody pointed me to this one. Uh, I forget. I want to say somebody did, though, in, on Discord. And yeah, um, this is something I've been wanting to do for a minute. So I actually had a, uh, a Lua mod idea. It will require Lua to do this, where I wanted to like scale the power of bound items based on your conjuration skill, maybe other things. Because um, just like in Vanilla Morrowind, if you didn't know and you don't want to, you know, cheese the game spoiler, plug your ears. But in Vanilla Morrowind, you can go and buy a bound weapon spell. And the only caveat being you might not be so hot at casting bound spells, but when you do cast it, you have like one of the best swords in the game that weighs nothing uh, that lasts for a good two minutes you can poke people with. You know, you don't need to carry a sword around. You can just spawn your super OP sword. So this changes that big time. Bound weapons have weight. I think they should. I didn't consider that for my balance idea, but I think they should. And uh, they cost more and... The effectiveness of the spells is a little bit reined in. Um, perfect fit for total overhaul, in my opinion. And as much as I love to cheese bound items in my runs, you know, this is actually a nice thing that keeps their usefulness.
but um, you know, doesn't make it so you can have the best sword for most of the game within the first half hour of the game. Because <laughs> that's what happens if you go and you buy the bound. If you're if you're decent at long sword, and you go and buy bound long sword, you're set. You don't need anything else. Um, is there spell making to tweak it? Gonzo asks. I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, I would assume that you could craft your own, you know, bound item. But I don't know, like, the magnitude and effectiveness in the base game is, is changed by this one, you know? So, um, I don't know. And again, this is a, something I think where Lua will allow us to be more flexible, more powerful. We'll do more things. But for now, I mean, this is exactly what I've wanted for a long time. Um, and I played a couple new games with this, and it's good. You can still get that bound sword, but it's not going to, like, you know, cheese the game for you completely. So yeah, this is a balance in nerfing for sure, though. Oh no, I'm still editing. Okay. Indeed. Indeed. I like it. Nice touch, too. A really nice touch. I don't know why we haven't really seen much like this before. Um, I'm sure the MWSC crowd has some cool stuff, though. Like, I know Danae or somebody has a, a Daedric intervention. That's a cool idea. I would love to have that. I think we can almost do that. We're close. Okay. Gonna save that. This balance and nerfing section is just a doozy. Uh, but, I mean, there's just so much good stuff here, you know. I like it. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, next up. Okay. Do we got magic of regeneration on here? No, we don't. Okay. I think this is a 0 0.49 exclusive, though. Ferris, magic, regen, nexus, mods. Um, generally speaking, I'm not a huge fan of mods that will give you super fast magic of regen. This one, to be fair... Default uh, the default value is pretty fast. Um, I am playing with let's see here mods settings gameplay. Heh. Okay. Um, global. Yeah. Okay. So the default here. Um. This is a mod, by the way, that I'll be adding to 6.x for folks, which will automatically configure gameplay mods if they want it. You know, maybe you want the default value of 1.0 for Magicka Regen. My opinion, it's a little high. Um, I drop it down quite a bit to 0 0.06. But this is enough where if you're walking around, you can reasonably regenerate enough Magicka to heal yourself if you need to. It's not like you're going to be able to completely heal yourself from death two or three times over. You're not going to fill up. But you'll have some, you know, and it's a nice accompaniment to the um, Zeph Magic Focus mod that we use, I think. So you can choose to use either or or neither or, or set this. You can really, you know, like, uh, let's make it 10. Your magic is just like instantly filling up. We're not going to do that. But I digress. You could. So anyways. Hmm. Magic. All right. Nice. Very nice. And, uh, okay, so this will work with 0 0.48, actually. I'm not sure why I have it in my 49-only stuff, but it'll work with 0 0.48. Cool. So it's going on, for sure. We're not going to add 0 0.49 wanting stuff directly. We'll have that dev build users section of the mod list to kind of entice people. And who knows? Maybe 0 0.49 won't take two years to come out. Mm. What do you guys think? This is a balance and nerfing thing, right? I would say magic of regeneration, balance and nerfing. I would say yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. All right. Auto attack. 
This is another one by Ferris. Actually, it's just... Uh, Huh, what happened to auto attack? It's not in here anymore. Hmm. All right, well. Ah, <laughs> her tracks. You're too kind, my man. And this is stuff like this is why I gotta get this chat on the video, but I just want to read out loud something Herdrax just said. Warms my heart. Sometimes when people are in the zone and doing their tasks well, it goes unnoticed. So before the stream ends, I want to drop a major shout out to Brother Gonzo and you, Johnny, for the humongous task of making 6.x a game changer for the entire site. Very honored to be learning just from you guys. Herdrax, it's my pleasure. And I want to thank you too, because you've been a big help. Um and yeah, also much love to Gonzo. All you guys. Um and everybody here who's just joining the stream and hanging out while we do this. I love you all, and this is a good time. In the meantime, i got to look into what happened to the auto attack. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll ping Ferris about it, but um, we'll add this one if we haven't already. I don't think we have it on the... Let's just quickly look here. Mm. No, no, not on here. And this is a good one, <laughs> also. <laughs> Love the usage of the adoring fan here. <laughs> Excellent. Um, this is a gameplay one, I would think. Maybe it would consider controls. We don't really have a controls category. Um, maybe you could consider this a controls mod because it gives you it gives you a binding right for something that doesn't normally have a binding when a hotkey is pressed a light from the player's inventory will be equipped and their currently equipped shield if any will be stored to be automatically re-equipped when their hotkey is pressed again feels like controls honestly but we'll put it under gameplay for now and if somebody says no it doesn't belong there we'll move it naming is the eternal battle that I just don't like to put too much brain power into so all right ah uh, yeah here's a good one from our friend Zach has a cat resident Lua wizard detect all keys nexus mods you can do it duck duck go don't make me work all right cool all right, yeah, here it is. Some keys, such as slave keys, are not associated with any door or container, which makes them not detected by the detect key spell. This fixes those for OpenMW. But is this... Will not work... Okay. Unfortunately, this is gonna. This is one that we'll add, but this will be a dev build only offering. Very cool. Detect all keys by Zach. Prop Zach. Can't wait to see. He teased yesterday that I don't know if you guys saw, but he teased the airship mod. Get ready for a real airship mod. And so I've been sitting here like this the whole time, ready. I don't know about you folks. I've been waiting. Mm, do I have the dev? Yeah, okay, right up there. Mm. I suppose I forgot to mention that, yeah, in between this stream, this uh, weekend streams and the last, I had actually spent some time updating this, finally pulled out of the note, the stream notes, mods and everything, and put them in here. That's why it's a bit more fleshed out than it had been last time on the stream. So this is officially the canonical planning list now. Everything's on there. Excuse me, that we've documented thus far. Cool. Yeah, it's a very good, very nice one. And definitely one of those weird oversights, you know, that they probably didn't even notice when they were making the game. All right, spell effects rebalance. Spell effects rebalance. Nexus. And I forget who pointed me to this one, too. But uh, it's a new take. 
on uh, just tweaking some of the spells, right? Changing Changes the casting costs of spell effects that are strictly more expensive, cheaper than other spell effects with the same practical benefits. Feather versus Fortify attributes. So this is an interesting area of the game mechanics, right? Where Morrowind has so many different game mechanics, especially compared to later Bethesda games. There's just so much overlap, right? And like, yeah, you know, Feather, Fortify attribute is is one, just one of many, many examples. So um, these changes are outlined here in the description. I encourage you to check them out. I looked through them and thought, I don't 100% love all of these, but I think the package as a whole is good. So um, I do love them all. I just don't 100% love them all, but I think it fits really well in what we're trying to do here. So throwing it in. And I have been playing with this one a bit, and I like it. I like it. Our friend, the balance and nerfing section, just getting more and more. Here we go. All right, and yeah, we're kind of getting into the last couple minutes of the stream, and I just wanted to mention I had planned on doing my MWSE setup extravaganza just bleeding into it, but I actually am getting a little... I think I'm going to need a, a lunch break before I do that, so... May still be on the table. I'm not 100% sure. It's a nice day. I also have to go outside into the real world and do things. I have an ongoing battle with uh, foliage. True story. Got to refuel, indeed. All right. Oh, yeah. This is big. Did we put this one on here? Hang on. I think I already put this one on here. Big, big, big. Zach's Lua Multimark mod. Big hype. We've looked at this a few times on the stream, but not the official release, which is here on Nexus Mods. Go get it. Supports 0 0.48, so if you're, you know, sticking with the releases only, you're good on here. And yeah, it's going on the list. Um, Zach helpfully linking to the MWSC on there, too. That's great. So we're going to go ahead and actually say, though, because we haven't done this yet. We're replacing something. All right. Oh man, I remember making this one for the multiplayer. People are still using this one, by the way. I wrote this one for uh, TES3MP many years ago. And yeah, as recently as April, I merged a merge request for this. Oh, this brings me back. Pretty concise script. I got most of the code from Texafornian. Old friend of mine. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so we're going to replace this one. Boom. Nice. Yeah, I'm just, you know. I can understand maybe not being into the whole multiple mark concept. I need it. And this is a good one. It really works. And this UI that Zach cooked up is cool. It's a creative way to pause the game without actually having a pause mode. Cool. All right, we can fold this section up. That's a huge one. Okay, mage's robes. Did I put this one on here? Nope, not yet. We have hinted at the fact that it's coming, though. All right, we got a clothing section. And if I didn't mention before, this is another one that OK High told me about. Somehow I missed another fantastic one by MD. And I have played with this one a bit, and it's pretty awesome. If you're a magic-using character, you're going to love this one. We just take a quick look, and yeah, so it's it's robes. Like, if you ever played Skyrim, there's, like, mage robes that give you a nice buff for your mage skills. Same idea here. 
and with a cool, really cool style. And what's not pictured here, I don't think, is they also ship. Um, it was recently updated to include normal and specular maps for OpenMW. So uh, props to Arcarius who did the work there. And I mean, these just look, even without the normal and spec maps, it looks great. But with those, it's, you know, perfect fit. So we need this. Whoop. Moving on. Let's see here. Just some just some category changes, but oh, oh, this is another one. Argonian full helms. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Thank you, browser history. Did I maybe look at this one? Argonian. Nope. This is a good one that had me thinking. It is yet another one that had me thinking to myself, like, wow, what took me so long to get something like this? Um, I don't really play these beast races a lot, to be fair. Which I should do. But yeah, these just look outstanding. Finally, your beast race characters can have a helmet. You know, I mean, it only stands to reason that they would have something. Just do the constraints of game development, though, you know. They made it a hard rule. Beasts don't get helmets. Boom. But these all look great. 25 new Argonian tailored versions of existing vanilla, vanilla full helmets to the game. Some with options, with and without horns. One with a variant made for non-beasts. And yeah, I mean, quite extensive. Really nice. And uh, we've added quite a few other ones by uh, Dagoth Volkdom. So uh, props and thank you for your nice work. Very happy to put it onto our lists. This would go under armor, I think. Um, right? Yeah. But also, did I forget to... No, okay. I was going to put it on NPCs, but then I thought to myself, just now, it's armor. Which we don't have. Whoop, whoop. Tab fail. Cool. Very, very nice. All right. All right, cool. Blade Meister. This list is really coming together, Gonzo says. Oh, yeah. It's cool, too, because I've been playing with this setup for a while, some time. So I've kind of, like, lost sight of just how much we're adding. And it's so cool to look at it right here and just be like, wow, you know. Um, how can we possibly add this much stuff to an already huge collection of content? I don't know. But we here we are. <laughs> here we are. Uh, and a lot of this, like what light fixes, is just stuff that I slept on, you know. So that just goes to show you how much is just out there. I'm a guy who thinks about Morrowind a lot, and somehow some of this has flew under my radar. And here we are. Moving on. Okay, Blade Meister. Yeah, this is a cool one. I believe by a familiar author, if I'm... No, no, okay. Not somebody I know, but still a kind of a cool idea here. 
Tucked away in the flooded back tunnels of Adamasartus is a talking, shape-shifting blade that hungers for the power it once held. It asks that you help it regain what was lost, and in exchange, it will be your most powerful ally. Uh, I forget how I came across this one, but I read that description and was like, need it. Um, there's a couple games that have like sword companions. I'm thinking of Suikoden with the... Uh, I forget the name of the sword, but the the cheeky sword who hounds Victor. Um, and that just got vibes here of that. And I was like, we need this. Oh, nice. Gonzo says, uh, speaking of contributions to the site, Herdrax console command guide for Zax Utils is legit. Agreed. Um, and this is something we haven't looked at too much quite yet, but Herdrax has done the excellent work of putting together a, uh, a guide that we'll be including on the website. It's still highly in development, highly in flux, being a 0.49 feature, but we've got this uh, Zacky Tills console commands guide. Um, and if you want a preview of it, please feel free to check it out here on GitLab. But yeah, as you can see, very thorough. Um, Herdrax has been playing around with this a lot, learning the ins and outs, how to work with it, um, preaching you know, to me a lot about how great this is. And no doubt, made by Zach. I'm sure it's going to be awesome. Um, so yeah, definitely looking forward to fleshing this out and putting this on the website. Going to be good times. Zach Utils presently um, development builds available at GitHub. Probably want to grab it from there. Um, so, yeah. Very good call out, Gonzo. Agreed. Good, good stuff. So, I'm wondering, is this going to be the first official companion mod I add to the mod list? <laughs> Herdrex says Blademeister. Little Arcor vibes. I don't think I'm familiar. I don't think I get the reference. Wish. We're adding this one though, and it's gonna go into the companion it's gonna be in the companion section. Um I put it in my setup, obviously under weapons, but it's not really it is. Oh, talking sword from Baldur's Gate 2. In case you didn't guess, I never played Baldur's Gate 2. But cool, that's cool, very cool. Probably ins uh, inspiration here. Hmm. No explicit mention of Baldur's Gate. I had to check, though. Icewind Dale. Okay. All right. Yeah, I know. Hoodrax says, what? <laughs> so I have the um, the remakes and stuff. Remember that backlog of games I mentioned earlier? Who's with me? <laughs> we will. All right. I will. Maybe we'll do some multiplayer. I think they have multiplayer on the remake. Uh, okay. Companions. Yeah, okay. We don't already have it on here. Yeah, I mean, the Blade Meister is technically a companion, so it's going to be officially the first companion mod I think we put on the list, so that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> I will try it. Herdrax, I promise. We'll get there. Once, I was just going to say, once we're done perfecting OpenMW, we'll get there, but 2090 is a, is a long ways away. Maybe I want to play it before then. <laughs> yeah, we're not rushing, but we do want to play it before 2090 for sure. All right, boom, companion section. All right. And yeah, as I, as I mentioned in the start of the stream, um... Skywind, Tamriel Rebuilt soundtrack. These are ones I think that you can add some tracks from the... There's two TR soundtracks out there, and the original one you can kind of drop into your Explorer folder, and it fits really nice. But it'll be cool to make like a Lua mod, much like what the MWSC peeps have right now, um, to regionally have you know music. There's a lot of uh, region area-specific tunes uh, in this one in particular. You know, if we just look at my... Uh, whoop. Oh, no. <laughs> if we just look at my track list here, you know, we got an Anthirin song here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Mournhold, Tear, you know, um, Port Telvanis. We have a lot of nice regional music that uh, it would be cool to, like, trigger these songs or specific songs in certain areas, you know. That's what I'm, like, really hungry for is that kind of capability in uh, the Lua API. But anyways, um We'll get there. And then, yeah, this one, M8. We'll, we'll end the stream by looking at this one. Oop. I think uh, Magamo shared this one. All right. 
Yeah, and so this is, um, unless my ears deceive me, these were sounding a lot like Oblivion spell songs, sounds. Um, ah, they come from MAO, yep. Right, hence the name. But it's not the uh, entire mod, just the sounds. And again, further to what I was just talking about, once we have the ability to do neat things with songs, we could so um, also do things with spell sounds um, and, and acoustics in general. So um, we'll put this one on there. And I will also muse out loud about something I talked about yesterday and in prior weeks, which is uh, kind of the, uh, the Lua, OpenMW Lua Mod Skunk Works project which is basically a project where we look at what's possible. We identify what we need for things that are not possible, and we help people port things or, or get new ideas off the ground for Lua Mods. Um, and so look for that in the coming weeks. Probably once the modathon's over, once the dust settles on the CFG generator rewrite, we'll sincerely take a look at starting that. All right, um, so we're going to make an audio section here. All right, put this one in there, and that will will deploy the website, as is tradition. And we'll have another green day on the list here. Keeping it productive. <laughs> Checking all the boxes, so let's do that. Before we, whoops, before we say goodbye. All right, and so hopefully by next week, we'll have almost all of the work or most of the work <coughs> um, for the CFG generator rewrite. We'll have that in the bag, hopefully. <coughs> but we will also have the mod, uh, the mod jam. Excuse me. Oh. We'll have the mod jam behind us, and we can look at some of the stuff that I was, uh, as a judge, looking at, and that'll be really exciting. Um, Gonzo says, skunk work sounds awesome. Have a bunch of ideas. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and Herdrek says, are we up for shotgun stream tonight? I don't know, honestly. Um, I need to get that MWSE set up going. I just don't know if it's going to be a bit later because I have really have some yard work that I should be doing. But I don't know. I'll be in touch. We'll be talking on Discord, everybody. And if you see me pop up later on, jump on and we'll have a MWSE party. We'll play some Black Flag. <clears throat> um, but I'm going to leave it at that as I choke to death over here. <clears throat> I'm fine, though, really. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Happy modding, and have a lovely day, everybody, and I'll see you next week.